so we are working on finding the domain when they give us a function and not a graph. When we are focusing on finding the domain, we need to think about what all can we substitute in for that x value and it apply or and it makes sense. We know that the very specific things to be very cautious about are these things here. When our denominator comes up to be zero, when our square root comes up to be negative, if we have a word application, we know that it actually has to make sense in real life, or if there's anything else that just makes our problem go crazy. Okay, in the last video, we worked over um, examples where we cannot divide by zero. In this video, we're going to see some other examples. So I have example four, five, and six here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can find the domain of these three examples on your own, focusing on those cautions that we just talked about. Okay, in example four, we have a square root. Now we know that the square root has to end up to be positive on the inside because we cannot have square root of a negative number. So that means the inside of my square root, specifically in this problem, two minus t, has to be positive. The way that we represent positive is it has to be larger than or equal to zero. Because, of course, if anything's bigger than zero, it's a positive number. Now, zero is okay. We can take the square root of zero. It just simplifies to be zero. So that's why it's okay to include the or equal to bar. So anytime you're trying to find the domain of a square root problem, all you do is take the inside of the root, like here, 2 minus t, and set it larger than or equal to zero. Now I just have to solve this inequality, and so that's a review that we've done from before. I'm going to isolate my t by actually moving it to the other side, adding t to both sides. So that gives me 2 is larger than or equal to t. Now we really prefer the variable on the left. It makes much more sense that way. So let me rearrange it. It is like holding a mirror up to it. That's like saying t is less than or equal to 2. If we wanted to put this in set builder notation, all we would have to do is put that in the missing part, with the exception of the set of t's, since this variable is t in this example, such that t is less than or equal to 2. If we wanted to put it in interval notation, we know that any number up until 2. So negative infinity up to 2 and including 2 because we have that or equal to bar. So that means we can substitute any number less than or equal to 2, including 2, into this square root here, and it makes sense. If I substitute a number larger than 2 in for here, that would give me a square root of a negative number, which would make it undefined. Okay, we're going to use that knowledge to move on to example 5. I have two cautions in this problem. The first one is I know that I cannot divide by 0. My denominator cannot be coming out to be 0. And I cannot take square root of a negative number. So let me see if I can solve this in one sequence. Now, in the last example, I say if we take care of the square root problem, we know that x plus 6, for it to be positive, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. But if this is equal to 0, then that faces my second problem here, where my denominator, my whole denominator itself, could not be zero. So instead of me setting it up like this, I'm going to set it up as x plus 6 is larger than zero. That takes care of both of my issues. The larger than, meaning my square root has to be positive, and I do not put an or equal to bar here because that means then my denominator would be equal to zero. So I just need to solve x plus 6 is greater than zero. If I isolate my x variable by subtracting 6 from both sides, I get x is larger than negative 6. That should take care of both of these issues. 
in set builder notation, the set of x is such that x is larger than negative 6. Just substitute it into the blank. In set builder notation, so I have negative 6 or anything larger, but not including negative 6 itself. Again, just pay attention to which version the homework asks for. And if it doesn't specify set builder or interval notation, you get to use whatever notation you prefer. Now, in example 6, I see f of a is equal to the absolute value of 4 plus a. So, I have to think back to my cautions. My major two cautions are when my denominator is equal to 0, which does not apply in this problem because I don't have any denominator. When the inside of my square root is a negative number, I don't have that here because I don't have any square roots. Obviously, it's not a word problem, so I don't have any word applications. I have to think, is there any other problems? Well, is there anything I can substitute in for absolute value that would make it to come up to be undefined? And the answer is no. You can substitute anything whatsoever into absolute value. We have absolutely no cautions in this problem. We don't have anything to be careful about. So that means we can substitute any number that we possibly can think of into our x value. So if we wanted to do this in interval notation, any number between negative infinity and positive infinity works. If we wanted to do this in set builder notation, we use that double bar r, which means all real numbers, meaning we can substitute any possible number into that a variable and it come out to be an OK variable. Now, this kind of relates back to, somewhat sort of, kind of relates back to this graph here. Notice my domain here was negative infinity to positive infinity because my graph continued forever in the left-hand motion and it continued forever in the right-hand motion. That's going to be the exact same thing that's going to happen here. If we choose to graph this to double check, which I encourage you to do, my graph continues both left and right forever because we don't have any problems here. All right, I have hopefully given you enough examples of how to find domain when you're given a function so that you can be successful on these type of examples on your homework.